Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this video I will explain you how to set up and create a first person character and a third person character totally and completely from scratch, from zero inside Unreal Engine 5. In this video we will start with a blank Unreal Engine 5 project we will import a character and set up the materials. We will create key inputs. We will create a character blueprint and an animation blueprint and a little extra extra something. I will show you how to switch between first person and third person perspective. In this uh, tutorial you will end up understanding the workflow of setting up every playable first person or third person character for your project in the most elementary and basic way from scratch. For this tutorial you will need a character with uh, at least three basic animations which are a fall animation a idle animation and a simple walking animation and walk cycle. I showed you in the previous tutorial animation for beginners how to create a walking cycle and an idle animation and the fall animation is very simple and I want you to figure it out yourself if you create the animations yourself. It's basically a falling pose at the start on the zero frame and on the last frame I use 30, the same. And in the middle is a slight variation. Yeah, and you need those three um, animations. And how to export the your own character with your animations and stuff, I explained that part in the animation video. So. But you can also, of course, use uh, other character, maybe from Mixamo animated or something, however you like. And yeah. So uh, let's dive into it. Well, 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 um, open up your Unreal Engine 5, go under Games. And like I said, we will start completely from scratch. So choose the blank option a clean empty project with no code blueprint target platform desktop quality presets um, i would recommend scalable starter content unchecked ray tracing unchecked and let's give our project a name now let's hit create this will maybe take a bit to open up the project Awesome, so we are now inside Unreal Engine 5 in a blank project. But as you can see, there's still a lot of stuff going on in our blank project. Um, to our liking, we can, for example, just select elements and delete them if it's a bit too much for us. And uh, if you're working off a, a lower end PC, you can go up here on the settings and under engine scalability and just hit, for example, low and it will turn everything a bit down. Okay, so much to that. Um, we have, I will keep it on high for this tutorial, but you can adjust it however you like. So we have down here the content draw. Let's click that. And now we have the content draw open to dock it. It's already here. Dock in layout if we want. And to get rid of it, just X it away. So I will keep the scene as it is. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to save the whole thing. New map. This will cr 
uh, create a save file with all the data and stuff. In the last tutorial, uh, if you create a character completely from scratch in the last video, in the animation video, I explained how to export a character with all the materials and animations in one FBX file. So check out the previous video to uh, if you don't know how to do that. And yeah, and I like to keep my things organized and stuff. So I will create a dedicated folder. So folder, let's call it character. Okay, open up this bad boy and uh, right click and import to game and character. I have him here as a FBX file, the tutorial guy and hit open skeleton. We have no uh, character before that, so we have no option here. We have to create a, a skelet. So let's keep that non skeletal mesh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Animation import animations. Of course we want our animations. And yeah, and basically we only had to check this one here and let's hit import all. And now it will take a bit to load everything in, but already as you can see, we have here the skeleton of the character. We have the physics asset. We have here the, just the mesh. We have here the, the textures and the dedicated materials. And here, those green things here are the animations. Okay. Let's attack the first material. We have here um, the material for the, the, yeah, the arms, for example. And we have here a very basic setup. It's very glossy, as you can see, because currently only the basic color is plugged in. So to get rid of the glossiness, we could, for example, hit hold the one key and left click and we create here this this value which is currently zero but if we select it we can here adjust it to for example one value one and let's turn up the roughness for example or you could just turn down the specular to zero and now the glossiness is gone now we can give it a save So this uh, material will still react to the lights, but um, the glossiness is gone. If you overall want an unlit texture, which is very useful, uh, usual for, for retro textures and stuff, you have to click here, main character arms, and here shading model, default lit to unlit. And now it won't react to light anymore, but we have to plug in RGB into emissive color. Now it won't react to light. And that's a personal preference. I will go with the unlit um, version because I don't care about lighting uh, currently. And But you can leave it with the roughness. You can adjust your stuff. How Ever you like like that for example you know what let's leave it let, like that and let let's do exactly the same thing for all the other materials to get the pixelation back we have to get not inside our material but inside our texture file double click and we have here texture group and let's hit 2 D to the pixels unfiltered. If we check that, give it a save, we get our pixel pixelation back. If we now check the material, now we have clean pixelation. Perfect. We can now um, just, for example, here take the idle guy and by holding the right mouse button and um, WASD, we can pan around and Q is down and E is up to fly around in the scene. So 
basically the first step is to create the key inputs. So we are actually able to control our character. Let's do that. File. Edit. Up here in the edit. Project settings. This will pop up and down here on the engine is input, but you could also type in here input. So input, let's select it and with your action mappings and axis mappings. Axis mappings are always for movement and action is for except running, shooting stuff and um, actions. Yeah. <laughs> so for movement, we will attack the axis mappings first. Let's do that. Okay, axis mappings, hit the plus button, left click, drop out. And the first thing we want is basically walk forwards. And it's also at the same time backwards. Perfect. Enter. And now this will pop up the key input. Of course, you know what button to use for walking forward. So let's select this left click and hit the W button. Now this changes into the W. If you want uh, something else like for a gamepad or um, motion controls, blah, blah, blah. Here is a big list if it's not for PC. Now this is forwards. So it's scale one W forwards. But if we want to get backwards, it's the opposite. So minus one in scale. Very easy. So let's hit the plus button. Left click and S to go back. Now we have change. We have to change this here to minus one to get the opposite value of um, walking. Currently, this has only the dedicated keys. The Basically, the, the, the functions behind it, we still have to set up that stuff inside the blueprint afterwards. But for now, let's create the keys. So this one is done. Let's hit plus and let's create the same thing for left and right. Walk, right and left makes more sense. Right and left. And... A for right, this is a one, the opposite, oh, I, I, I mean, it would be D, right first, I would, why not, and A, and A is the opposite, so nice. Now we need controls for the mouse to look around, so let's go up here again, create new input, let's call it straight up look right and left and now for this we don't need a key we need the mouse input so let's go here drop down mouse this is the x axis x axis is horizontally now we need the vertical input to look up and down let's do that plus look up slash down mouse and the y-axis this is a bit confusing um, but to g don't get the, the opposite values um, I would put in here minus one minus one would be up this sounds kind of weird but uh, you will see it will work after we are done so that's the basic setup. Perfect for the key inputs for basic movement. Now we could also set up a uh, action for jumping plus drop out and let's call it jump plus. And of course I'm using here the space bar. So, and you can always come back and cha uh, change stuff, add stuff. For example, you can add stuff here for a uh, gamepad, um, for 
Xbox controller and stuff and yeah. So we can close that down. Perfect. Now we create a character blueprint. That way we get an controllable character. Okay. So let's create a character blueprint and give our key inputs a function. So right click, blueprint class, and we want a player character. Select and let's give it a name. Okay, let's open up our character blueprint class. Double click. Okay, nice. Now we have up here viewport, construction script and event graph. We will use the event graph and the viewport. But the first thing we have to do is um, we want to be able to see something with this character because we have no camera. So we need to add a camera to the whole character. Let's hit add. And here, tap in. So let's use the default camera. Perfect. Now let's bring it up to a kind of head height. And basically this is the point where you have to decide if your character is a first person character or a third person character. I will, um, I think the best situation would be if I explain both. Yeah, I, ex I will explain both and um, the more simplistic version is the first person character. Let's start with that one. Okay, perfect. We have here the camera uh, inside our, our capsule here. And for now we won't throw our character in the character blueprint. At first we wanna apply uh, logic to the key inputs. Switch here to event graph. And basically we only need, we need none of those. S drag select and delete. Now let's give our key inputs some function. Right click. And we have the two walk functions. Walk. And we have to scroll up and here access events. Walk forward backwards. It's the first one. The second one. Walk. Access events right and left. Perfect. So now we need basically the value. We need the, the current rotation um, of our character. That way we can update the rotation with our inputs. So we need, we controlling our character and we need the current rotation of what we control here. So let's right click, get, get control here, pawn, get control rotation. Perfect. Now the rotation is based on a X, a Y and a C value. We only need the C value. To get the C value out of this, we have the return value, which is a combined value of those three. To split it up, right click, split, pin. Perfect. Now we can drag out here this, the single ones. Now we only want to use and move based on the Z value, Z axis, drag out left click hold and here search for make rotator and now we are reducing our current um, rotation to only the z because we only we don't want to fly and move around on the other axis we only want to move on the floor on the z axis perfect 
So, and based on this value here, we can get a, a vector forward because we want to walk forward and backwards. And we want a right vector because we want to walk right and left. And the left and backwards is only the negative version of the first one. So let's drag out, left click, hold, drag out, forward vector here. Perfect. And the same for the right. Get right vector. Perfect. So let's zoom out a bit. And now we need to add movement based on our input. So let's take this one here, drag it out. So this is basically the input function. And here the logic will arrive at the add movement. So add movement input. Perfect. And we can do exactly the same thing for below here. So we can left click, select it and control D to duplicate, plug that in. So, and here, if we press the W or the S, the signal gets sent to add movement, but based on our current rotation forward in just on the Z axis. So we have to plug in, in this value into the world direction, and the scale. So basically the amount of movement is coming out of here based on our input. Let's plug that in and the same one, the same thing for here. Perfect. Uh, and yeah, let's give it a save and let's give it a try. Close that down for now. To actually spawn our character in the scene, we need a player start. So here on the place actors, you can also find it here in uh, those place actor um, options. If you don't have this window, it should be under windows and here place actors. So let's player start. On this point, the player will spawn into the game. If you bring it up, he will fall down, for example. Okay, so, but now we have to dedicate a, a specific character to this player start. For that, we need to go back into the edit, project settings, and under maps and modes, we need to create a game mode. This is basically a blueprint that um, works for all levels, characters, for the whole project. And there are other blueprints that only work in the current level and map and stuff. So this works for everything. So create new and let's call it tutorial game mode. Perfect, save. And this is now our, our current play mode. We can switch here between the, the play modes and uh, we can set up here the fault stuff for movement, spectator, blah, 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 and so on. And we can add even more stuff like respawning and save points inside the game mode, but that's for the future. So the fault pawn class, a one at the start that way it will pop up at the start. Project settings, map, modes. Here it will be always on top of the whole list with the one up front. We can always change that, but for now, let's start. And as you can see, the key inputs are working perfect, but we can't use our mouse. So let's do that next. Double click on the main character and um, 
to keep everything tight we can drag select above it right click and create commentary and name it walk so let's create something for us uh, to look around and for that we need the the look input so right click and look and scroll up event axis up and down and right click look and scroll up left and right this one is extremely easy we only need to add control um, pitch and your input so add controller here input pawn input and pitch for up and down and target is we saw we ourselves the, the the main character and the value is based on the input based on the mouse the same for the yaw so horizontal drag out add controller input here yawn input perfect okay we can drag select right click create comment and look input and drag select above everything create comment from selection and um, let's call it movement compile save and hit play let's give it a try okay we can move around um, with the keys and left and right so we have here here in the camera this is now where the differences between third person and first person start click on the camera which is currently our first person camera and we click camera left click and camera options here use pawn control rotation check that compile save and if we now hit play you can use the mouse you can walk around and perfect the, the key inputs work nicely and what's also very very fast to do because unreal engine um, gives us the opportunity to save a lot of time with very simple stuff we also created the, the jump input and um, based on this and the, the character setup and stuff we only need to it's easy like that here jump input and jump basically so right click into our commentary folder and jump scroll up add event event on jump oh here action inputs input created the jump option and if we press the spacebar the jump option so drag it out we want to jump not jumu jump <laughs> so here jump perfect drag select click comment and jump in put pretty easy and here on the character based on the character movement here if we click on that we have here the max walking speed and the jump option wait where is it it's way easier if you search here jump c velocity that's currently jumping this high if we increase or decrease the value it will increase our um yeah jump input uh, jump height so let's give it a save uh, compile save and let's give it a try let's press spacebar and we jump 
window can run. And we created a basic FPS setup completely from scratch. And now it's very easy to switch the setup into a third person setup. Uh, for that, we need to change some stuff up. But for now, to this point, we created a FPS setup. Pretty nice, pretty good. So um, yeah, but for the third person setup, anyway, we need uh, our character. So we already have here mesh character mesh. This is a skeletal mesh. We can always add more skeletal mesh here on the add, but we only want our character. Let's get rid of that one here and let's drag it a bit out. And here on the non switch it to tutorial guy. Perfect. Now let's select him, bring him down. And we may have to adjust the um, collision component. Let's change the height here to 100. And we can bring him down and here 45. Why not? Compile, save. And let's rotate him into the right direction. Here we have the arrow. This is forward. And here 90 degrees to the side. Perfect. So he's not moving um, around because we haven't created an animation blueprint. So let's do that. And afterwards we adjust the rest. Safe. Close it down for now. Okay, 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 okay. Let's create the animation blueprint for our character. Right click, animation, animation blueprint. And yes, we want to use this skeleton and create. Let's call it main character animation blueprint. Double click and here we are inside the animation blueprint. We have here also an event graph and here this animation graph. Let's start with the animation graph. For that, right click and new state machine. Perfect. Let's plug that bad boy in. Double click. And here we can lay out our animations and how they react when they start and how they should fade into each other. And of course, we are starting with the idle animation because it's the default um, the default animation. So let's change this a bit around and let's plug entry into idle complete. And as you can see, it's translated here in the viewport to our character safe. Now from our idle animation, we want him of course to be able to walk or in your case it could be an uh, run animation also i will now explain i will in this video only explain the basic the most basic setup so you can really follow up and after that you can always get more complicated so, and the fall animation. Which is basically the animation for the jump or while falling and stuff. So those three are the, the basic animations you need for every character. And there can be animations in between, there can be uh, it, it can get way more complicated than this, but for now we will keep it this simple. 
So now the system, the animation blueprint needs to know when to switch between those. So we need certain values that tell the, the animation blueprint. Okay, now I'm an idle and now I'm walking and now I'm falling and stuff. So it can switch around. For that, we need to go into the event graph. And we need to communicate with our character blueprint. That means drag it out and cast two, and in our case it's one main character. Here it is. And try to get pawn owner Need to be plugged in here. So basically we can now communicate back and forth between our character movement. So also we know when there is a input happening and, and stuff. And um, this will basically trigger our animations and the switching in between. So let's compile. So, and the first thing we need to know is if there is any kind of movement happen. So, so is he standing still or is he moving around and stuff? So for that, we need to call out basically the, the speed of the character to know if he is walking or just standing still. And later on, the same value will bring us informations about is he standing, walking or running and stuff. And so the speed value is very important. So as main character, we ask here our main character to give us the velocity. In this case, it would be get, get velocity. That way we know if there is a movement happening and we need a vector length. Length like this. This basically means is it's one value in one direction and there are a lot of vector options in that way um, about velocity, but this is the most simple one. And so, and we want the vector length with basically just no speed, speed and how much speed. And we will turn this one into an, let's drag it out, promote to variable. And this variable down here, let's call it speed. Now we get a, a value for speed. So how much speed is currently, how, mu how, how much speeding is our character uh, around and stuff. And this is the first value. And this will allow us to see if we are standing still or moving. So let's, you know what, let's use it. Drag out idle to walk, double click. And, and here we created basically this transition and here is the, the rule for this transition. When is he not moving and when is he moving? Double click. So we need now our speed value, here this variable, drag it in, get and drag out. Basically not, it's, it's not less, it's 
here greater or equal than and I would put in here 0 0.1 or 1 so if it if the movement is greater the movement input is greater than 1 it means he is moving therefore we drag select right click copy therefore idle switches to walk but if we're standing still we want to change back to idle let's take walk and drag it out back to idle and here the rule double click and left click control v it's basically the same setup but just the opposite so lesser than currently we uh, had greater than so drag out and lesser than equal than one so now it's detecting if movement is under one so basically no input which means it switches back to idle compile and uh yeah let's no 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 Let, let's do the whole thing and now we have here the falling is he falling down somewhere is he jumping and falling down and stuff so we need something to trigger the fall so let's drag out here as main character very simple drag out and is falling character movement perfect now again we will create a, a value uh, um, a variable based on that it's a yes or no so it's a boolean drag it out and promote to variable and let's call it is underscore falling so this here is a value and this here is a yes or no a boolean is a yes or no and this one is a float which is basically a, a numbered value so let's use this here compile state machine so and now drag out double click and it's very simple is falling get is it fall uh is he falling yes then it will transition into the fall animation and the same one from walk compile basically the same backwards is he not falling then idle basically we'll click falling get and now drag out and not boolean so it's basically is he not falling like that so as you can see it can switch us around it can switch around and it can be way more complicated than this but this is the most basic setup like that so perfect we created an animation blueprint and now let's apply to our character double click on the character blueprint mesh character mesh and we already wait, let's switch we already uh, the mesh is the dedicated tutorial guy mesh but he don't he doesn't has a dedicated animation blueprint here animation mode use animation blueprint and animation class let's switch that to our main character one main character animation blueprint and now this logic from the animation blueprint is applied to our character here save so before we dive into the setup for a third person character let's just 
finish up the uh, the, 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 the setup for a first person setup. And this is very simple. We need to bring the camera into the mesh basically. So let's select the mesh, uh, the, the, the camera, drag it into the mesh like that. The apparent socket. Cross. And I will take here. No, I, I don't have a head. It would be the, the last spine. No, it's down here. So let's bring those values back to one. And to see it, we need to scale it down. Because it's now applying to the dimensions of the head. So, and we need to rotate. Minus 90 and perfect. So it's now parented to the head basically. Let's bring it forward, something like that. Nice. Compile, save. And let's play. So as you can see, the camera is now inside the character and is moving the character around. If we hit, if we go forward. He is walking, perfect. And if we hit the space bar, he is falling, the falling animation. Idle, jump, walk, jump. Nice. So we created a full body first person character. Very simple, very basic, and you can apply the same workflow to basically all other character situations and stuff. So now I will uh, show you how to set up basically all of that for a third person character. So let's get rid of what we just created. And now we need to bring the camera out of the mesh again. So as we had it before like that, now we need a spring arm. Spring arm, and let's bring the camera into the spring arm. Okay, so we got uh, get always some kind of distance going on and stuff. And let's move the camera to the right. So basically, um, try to have everything on the camera on zero zero zero, and only and only move the the spring arm. And you can also here enable camera lag, so it will uh, lag in movement and stuff. So, okay, let's start from the top. You need to check some boxes for this whole situation to actually work. Here in the first one, main character self, you need to untoggle the use controller rotation yawn. Uncheck that, by default it should be checked. Uncheck that. Here on the spring arm, you need to check use pawn control rotation. Check that. Inside the camera, um, in contrast to the first person setup, you don't use this option here. And inside the camera, uh, the, the character movement, you have orientate to movement. Perfect. If you check those things, Save the character. So if you check that, you end up with a third person setup. Like that, you can pan around with your with your camera. But if you move, 
the rotation will adjust to the direction of the camera. Nice. Nice. Well, and um, hmm. So those are the differences between third person and first person. And now you can apply it however you like. Okay, let's do a quick bonus tutorial round. Um, let's create a switchable um, perspective. So with one key, you can switch between third and first person perspective. Let's do that. Uh, first step would be let's leave this setup like it is. Um, but to understand what's going on, let's call this third person camera. Let's add another camera, camera, and this is the FPS camera. And like I said before, in the FPS setup, the camera needs to be inside the mesh. Let's repeat very quickly the process. Let's search out for the last spine or the, the head bone and scale it down very quickly. Let's adjust the rotation. Minus 90. And let's this one here. 80 and let's bring it a bit forward. Let's change here to local. Thing like this yeah perfect so to have a switchable uh, setup this should currently look like this you have the the main character the capsule the mesh inside the mesh inside the mesh is the FPS camera which is parented to the socket the last spine or the head bone like this and this camera is using Pawn control rotation. Check that. The spring arm is using all of those options in the camera settings. Third person setup, uh, the third person camera is here default basically. And camera movement is using orientate rotation to movement. Perfect. Save, compile. And let's uh, set up something, a key that we can switch between those cameras. So for that, zoom in a bit, right click, um, key in put W or something, I don't know. Um, no, let's change it. Click on this here, select key value. Let's use tab, for example. Okay. Now we want to switch between like a, a light switch. So this is a flip flop. Flip flop. So on off, not pressed and release like uh, jump. So once pressed, it's A. Once pressed, it's B and it's always changing back and forth. So let's take here the camera, drag it in and the third person camera, drag it in. And now drag out and set active. Oh, active, yeah, okay. set active. And 
Moment. Drag out. Set active. So let's plug that in. And for the other one, let's plug that in. Set active to check. Set active to check. But the problem is now we need to uncheck the other camera. So let's left click duplicate, duplicate, I, might, I mean right click, connect it, connect it, uncheck, uncheck, so it's new active. The first person character is here unchecked and the third person is here checked and here it's the opposite, the opposite is the case. So, okay, let's give it a try. Save, compile and let's play. Okay, we have here the third person setup. Let's hit tab. Okay, and now there's something weird going on because All those dedicated um, wait, where is it? Here in the in the main character, we unchecked use controller rotation yawn. We need to basically activate it for the first person and deactivate it for the third person. So let's do that. Drag it out. Oh wait, we, we need con troll here pawn set use controller rotation yawn. <coughs> okay. And um, select it, Control D to du duplicate. Or simply right click, like I said before. And so basically for the here, this one is the first person setup. This is the third person. We don't need it for third person, but we need it for first person. So check it. Now let's give it a try. Okay, everything as usual. Let's hit tab. Now the character is moving based on the camera. Perfect. And we created a switchable perspective. This is something uh, animation based. Uh, it's kind of weird now, but you can always change that. Yeah, nice. So that was a little extra bit. Um, let's create a comment very quickly. Switch view F FPS to third. Wow, so we toggled a huge bit of information in this tutorial. Uh, you learned a lot of things. You should be able to apply this stuff to basically every character inside Unreal Engine 5. You also have a bit of an extra knowledge um, part because you can now switch between uh, views. If you like this video, consider subscribing, liking this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you want to help the channel big time consider becoming a patreon and yeah i i i really if you made it that far i'm very very proud of you so <laughs> see you in the next one bye